Okay, I see you. But um, oh I just want to know one thing. Mm. Oh you ready? God. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Mm, oh my God. Stop fucking lying. Time to jump into this. Time to find out if your favorite Olympian has been lying to you. To make sure that we do our best job, we're gonna be checking this through five different areas of speculation, looking at all the factors and leaving you with our best justified answer. So let's jump into it with Michael Trent, oh, sorry, Mike O'Hearn, <laughs> the king of the natties. Just look at this guy. You look at him and you go, okay, this guy's been pumping since a very young age and that he has. Here's a picture of him when he's younger. Clearly this guy is huge, he is no joke, and he claims to be natural, and the sad truth is a lot of people believe him. This one to me isn't even in question, it just does not add up, there's absolutely no way, but he's gonna be an example. He's not an Olympian per se, but this will provide some context for the situation. All right, so this sucker is 6'2", 255 pounds, and he competes at like 6% at that weight, leaving him with a fat-free mass index of over 30. Right away, out the get-go, not a chance in heck. I don't care about your genetics, Mike. There is no way. This guy, there's just no chance with that fat-free mass index that he is natural. He preaches it, why wouldn't he? His standing is on his career, his business. Can't hate him for that, but there's just no chance right away. Now, looking back at this picture of him as a kid, from the history standpoint, you can see he definitely has A1 genetics. This guy is blessed genetics. It's just incredible, his hair genetics, as well as his physical genetics. He's just got A1 genetics, there's no doubt, and that will play a role, that will help you get a higher FFMI. He does train hard, preaches that power building lifestyle. So he's training hard, he's doing things right, he seems to have great knowledge and nutrition, but this is where it gets even sketchier. If you look at history, truly history, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the king, the number one bodybuilder. Arnold had horrible stats compared to Mike. Mike blows Arnold out of the water. And Arnold has admitted alongside many other people smaller than him to steroid use. So once again, Mike is not looking too good for that natty card. So going into the third and fourth considerations and speculations, we can take this farther to know that this guy has some very shady morals. This is how we're gonna kind of contextualize everything with the Olympians. For Mike, uh, he recommends that you buy his very expensive duck eggs, whatever magic that is, and you'll get huge like Mike. When we know this isn't true, this is some new thing he tossed on the table, he uses his incredible physique to market it, and this is just like very, very shady advertising. And he knows it, but it makes him money. And that's the sad truth. A lot of these people look at money more than they do at morals, and they just want to get to the top point. Past that, he has a machine called the Frog. This thing looks like some kind of a joke where you'd hop on it to kind of like twist yourself up, to play Twister with some friends. This isn't how you get swollen. If you want to get huge and become a 255 pound man, male at 6% body fat, clearly I'm doing something very wrong. I'm at his height. I get shredded about 190 and I'm very natural. I still obviously have some more room to go, but unless the frog is the secret to life, which it definitely is not, Mike is 100% not natural, and I can assure you guys of that. Okay, so this guy was just kind of our, let's rip into him, this is very obvious, you can see, but now this is where it gets tough. We're gonna move into Usain Bolt. I don't want you guys to get, we're gonna keep this educational and informative. It's not a place to kind of question it. We're gonna try every different standpoint we can, just so you guys, we don't break your heart about the truth or the not truth of Usain Bolt. Mike O'Hearn, we could see he's not natural from looking at him. Usain Bolt, this is where it gets very tricky. They don't train for size, so we're gonna have a little bit of a harder time using these measures, but let's dive into it. Okay, so looking at the fat-free mass index, Usain Bolt is a tall dude. He's 6'4", he's about, I'd say, 8 to 9% body fat. I would say 9, but we'll say 8 for the sake of argument, and he is 200 and seven pounds, and that leaves him with an FMI of 23.3. This is in the natural range, so from here we could say, ah, he could be natural, but you have to look past this number, especially because he's not a strength or physique athlete. They don't care about their 
how they look or whatnot. I'm sure they want to look good, but all they care about is how fast they are. So he is on the high end for someone that's not working to specifically blow themselves up and get as muscular as they can. So this number leaves us with a maybe yes, maybe no, but it doesn't tell us too much. We have to dive in further. Let's contextualize everything. Olympic sprinting is for the top, top 1% of sprinters. This is their golden moment. This is where everyone actually cares to watch a sprinter. No one really goes out and goes, yo homies, you want to go and watch them sprinting Friday night? It's not really a thing. So this is the golden stage, the top 1% of the 1%. They work so hard to get here, but a lot of these people work a little too hard and they'll do some shady things. Let's take a look at Ben Johnson. The urine sample of Ben Johnson was found to contain the metabolites of a banned substance, namely stanozolol. It's an anabolic steroid. Olympic testing too, there's also some ways around it. These people are pros, they have a ton of money, they can pay off. There's just unlimited potential and resource to avoid getting booked. And it's from seeing Ben Johnson and all these other runners and the truth that they actually were on steroids, it's very hard not to believe that Usain Bolt is as well. This guy is the best of the best. Ben Johnson got booked with a 9.79. Usain Bolt's running a 9.5. That is like, that difference in sprinting is amazing. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Why would he not? If they're at this top, top percentage, he wants to do everything he does to win. He, he wants to be a legend, he wants to be known. Why would he not do whatever it takes? These people spend their whole life grinding, working, slaving away. Why would they not do this? In fact, look at some of the testosterone notes here. When it comes to being the absolute best in any given sport, lots of sprinters are going to do whatever it takes to become better. So this could mean just simply increasing your testosterone levels from an average of a one to one ratio to a four to one ratio to enhance performance and make you better, faster and more efficient as an athlete. The sad reality guys is that any athlete that doesn't maximize their testosterone and GH levels to the maximum permissible level really has no chance of breaking a world record. Now the physique relevant to their lifestyle, it's clear sprinters work friggin' hard. They're out there, they grind, it's explosive. A lot of it is these explosive movements that will translate to some muscle growth, but they shouldn't be swollen and huge. Everything they want is just about explosiveness and how fast they can run. So it should transcend into that. If you kind of look at your high school sprinters, you'll see how their physiques kind of change with the sport. The very lean guys, they look good. It's very similar to how Bolt looks. Bolt is pretty jacked though, so it's a tough one. But if you look at wrestlers, you'll see that they're training for that muscular development. It's something they need in sport and it makes more sense for them to be muscular. So knowing that Bolt is at this high end of the FFMI scale makes me raise a lot of questions and eyebrows. He's not training for the size and this leanness that he has, but obviously he is an Olympian and he's gonna need to train. So once again, it doesn't give me too much of a definitive answer, but it's very hard to say. So the verdict and the considerations is, it's very hard to say all in all, because considering everything, the anabolics they would use and Ben Johnson was known to use was Winstrol. This shreds you down, makes you explosive, and it just increases your testosterone levels. As we saw earlier, if they want to win, why would they not increase their testosterone four times, get that crazy edge, and be able to get away with it? They have coaches and leaders in their lifestyles that say it's okay, and some of these Olympians sadly don't even know that they're taking it. They'll say that their coaches just recommend it and they're just taking it. It's very sad and unfortunate, but at the end of the day, if you wanna be the best, you have to do the best. These people will do anything, whatever it takes. When there was a study saying that if Olympians would take a pill where they could win gold, but they, if they would die, majority of them said they would. You gotta remember who you're working with. These are your hardest working all out individuals. And of course they're, they're probably with great morals. Usain Bolt's amazing, I really look up to him. I think he's a great guy, but he's gonna do whatever he has to do to win, whatever it takes. And for that reason, I would say I'm 90% sure he is on steroids. Even just from looking at him and looking at the people surrounding him, the fact that someone on his team was booked, a lot of the other runners running faster times were booked, it just makes sense. And even the fact that he's on that high end of that scale once again, overall I would say I'm 90% sure. These are the facts, don't hate me for it. I'm just looking at the total picture. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your comments below, try to bring in more concepts, Context, let's have a discussion together. Moving on to the next person. Number three on the list, although he is not an Olympian, we decided to choose Vegan Gains. The reason we decided to choose him because we wanted to show you guys a very obvious 
quote unquote natural, just to give you guys a heads up on what to look out for. Looking at the stats, vegan gains is six foot two, his weight is 180 pounds, his estimated body fat will say is 7%, although realistically he is much higher, which means his fat free mass index is 21.7, which is definitely on the low end of a natty. So vegan gains does have an above average FF MI, he's the type of dude who takes training seriously, but he has no reason to take steroids. Um, and that's the big difference compared to these guys who are Olympians going for gold medals. He doesn't compete, he just lives an average lifestyle. One thing to consider is he does seem to have rage issues, so you never know where that could be coming from. I fucking hate children. They literally make me sick. So all in all, I would say he is 95% natural. Then again, there are little things that could lead him to being an unnatural, but just being poor at it. So he could have a really bad training, um, training workout routine, really poor eating habits. He could just be a very bad natural. But with that being said, we can never be 100% sure, but I am 95% sure he is. Andre DeGrasse, Team Canada Sprinter. He is known as Usain Bolt's rival. He just came second place. Here are his statistics. So you guys can see here, his height is five foot eight. He weighs 155 pounds. His estimated body fat, we'd say, is around 9%, which leads to him having a fat-free mass index of 21.49. So Andre DeGrasse, 21 years old, running amongst the top runners in the world such as Usain Bolt and all those other guys. With that being said, when you look at his physique, he doesn't look like someone who would be taking steroids. He's very light and he does not have the developed muscular body like Usain Bolt. So it could just be the fact that he does have crap genetics. There are a lot of things that could lead to him not having as much muscle as a lot of the other runners. But you guys need to consider he's in it for the sprinting purposes. Although Andre doesn't have the appearance of a steroid user, we need to consider the fact that he's running against guys like Usain Bolt and guys who have been proven to take steroids um, in their running history. So with that being said, he's still crushing their numbers. And as a 21 year old, who's really trying to get out there to try to win Olympic medals. The question is why would Andre de Grasse not be taking steroids to give him that extra edge, to put him on top of those guys and to give Usain Bolt a run for his money. So all in all guys, with that being said, I would say Andre de Grasse is about 50-50. It's really hard to know. Um, Winstroll would be something that wouldn't particularly make him huge, but will definitely improve his results. So I think the main thing we need to do is just focus on how his physique grows and especially his times um, within the next few years and we will be the judge of that with those stats. Lastly, we have the king of all of the Olympians. This guy is regarded as number one. He's the big deal right now, Michael Phelps. He's truly a gift of our time frame and someone that will be remembered. He has countless amount of gold medals, but we can count them, boom, this number. It's pretty crazy. That's more than Canada's got in like the last five years. So got to respect him for that. But is that because of hard work and great genetics or hard work, great genetics and steroids? Let's explore. Michael Phelps is six foot four, 194 pounds and about 7% body fat. Him and his trainer claim he's five, but that is simply not true. If you compare what 5% actually looks like to Phelps, there's just no way. A lot of people downplay their body fat and we're keeping it as accurate as we can. So that puts him at a fat-free mass index of 22.1, which is very average for an elite level Olympian athlete such as a swimmer. He trains hard, he's doing everything right. He should be above that 19.0 set point. Phelps is a freak. He came out of nowhere and he just started dominating. He took the world by storm. No one knew who he was. No doubt he is made to swim. He has feet like flippers, a crazy caloric intake. He's tall. He's got the body for swimming. He's got the mentality. He's got the focus. There's some things we got to consider about him though. Like it's tough because a lot of swimmers have been busted for steroids, but not nearly as many as sprinters. Sprinting is very known to be correlated with this. Usually these strength and endurance sports are where swimming is considered more of a classier, old school kind of simple sport. So you'll get less of it. And the question is what steroids would he really need to take? Definitely something similar to them. Saying so, he is elite, he's top 1%. We have that same argument. He's gonna do whatever it takes, guys. And Phelps, just like Bolt, goes out and condemns other people. He feels that anyone using steroids is a disgrace to their sport and they should be taken out. However, this doesn't really tell us much. This is a wise move. This is what anyone would do. Go condemn the other guy and take the light off yourself. Come off as a great guy. It's so hard to say with Phelps. His body is incredibly developed. He's just a swimmer. He has good genetics. He looks good. He's lean. But it's so hard to say. 
One thing I would really speculate though is this caloric intake of his, as you can tell from this detail here. Speculations, I would still say 75% unnatty. It's very possible he's natty, but then again, very unlikely. If you're the top 1% top of the 1%, this is a whole world. He's literally and physically the best swimmer in the entire world. Why is that? How is he better than those people that are even on steroids, right? Is he just that naturally gifted? Unlikely not. Likely he is, like most Olymp Olympians on steroids. That's our takeaway, guys. They're gonna do whatever it takes. They're out there working 10 hours a day, doing the impossible, grinding. And it's not something to hate them for. At the end of the day, I'm fine. I'm fine to be a little bit ignorant to it. We did this to shed some light just so you guys could kind of witness the reality, but they're doing what it takes to be the best. And it's so hard for us to know, and unfortunately, the sport is tainted and ruined for that reason. There's no way to actually know. People work their way around everything. They cheat everything in life, just like school or any other aspect of your life. People cheat it, they find a way to misuse it and it ruins it for everyone else. But we truly can't know, but what we can know is the Olympics are an incredible show. They're a lot of fun to watch. We have amazing athletes, whether they're on Sarah's or not. They're working their butts off and they're doing their best. So with Michael Phelps, because he is the best, I would likely say he is doing something or taking something to give him that edge. Thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't hate us too much. Remember, let's keep it scientific and logical down there. I mean, we're not even gonna waste our time answering you if you're sending us weird emotional arguments about why you think this person's the best, so that makes them natural. That is not the case. Hopefully you really enjoyed this video. Like we said at the start of the video, if this is at 350 likes, we will do a part two, and it will be killer. Maybe we'll come at you with a different theme. Thank you so much for checking in. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We make awesome training videos, educational content. We explore uh, topics like this, and we have an awesome channel, so please check it out. Klaus Fitness, sub down here. Y'all are the best. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Peace. Variable. Trip good, I was hurrying up the